how are you today? Today I have another video for you and this is another book haul I have. This time I'm talking about books I just recently got from the local library. I returned quite a bunch of books and had already some more books waiting for me. This haul is quite, uh, has a variety of books. They go, go from middle grade up to adult, from, from non-fiction to uh, literary fiction, one of them I think it is at least, to quite a few fiction books, fantasy books. Yeah, still the, still the genre I prefer to read for this current time period. Now let's get right into it. The first book is an illustrated children's book, non-fiction, and it is entitled The Big Book of the Blue by Yuval Sommer. Now, this is a chunker of a book, as you can see. <laughs> I even have got to kind of really go back to. Uh, Yuval Sommer has quite a few books out, non-fiction books about the natural world, about various animals or species, uh, one about the birds. This one here is obviously about the ocean, all the animals that live in the oceans. And I just, I, I'm just attracted, I, I like his illustration style and I just finished, I, I just finished reading the big book of birds, that's a green, green volume and this here now is blue and I just like his illustration style. Obviously there is a lot of images, there isn't so much text in this, on these pages and somehow I enjoy, I really enjoy it because with all the letters I read over the last couple of months with all the books I read, devoured, absorbed. Sometimes just to chill out with images and little text is something very nice. And in also in 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 the in the book of birds as well as in the in this big book big book of the blue I'm sure I'll discover new things I didn't know before as well. And that is just look look at these hilarious fishes look and the whale there up there is is it a whale? Yes, I think it's a whale. He's smiling, isn't he? And then all oh, there are all these other funny, funny, funny creatures of the ocean. Oh, looking forward to go through that one. Definitely a read. I'm looking forward to it. Then the next book is the third book in a series that has uh, shares the same world, but each book has a different main character. And these are the Dragon the with the Chocolate Heart is the first one. I read that in spring, The Girl with the Dragon Heart, I read afterwards. And now here we have The Princess Who Flew with Dragons. And look at this amazing, beautiful, hilarious, exciting image. We have dragons um, and we have there the princess. And then look at this little goblin we have there behind. So I'm already curious to see what happens in this third instalment. What I have to say about uh, Stephanie Burgess's books is they are so well written, they are so rounded. And sometimes when you have finished them, it's just like kind of the, the reading the reading experience is so complete. They like kind of drop out of your awareness. But the books themselves, they touch down on so many topics of family, friendship, growing up, siblings, rivalry. Uh, then one of the books hold, brought in the, the Elven Kingdom, the Fire World, um, brings in all the all the all the kind of magics and I'm already very much looking forward to what this book here now holds and what story we are, we are going to explore a bit further obviously it's the princess uh, of this country where we have already the other two stories the next book is also a book that came out fairly recently I think it came out possibly August something like that or maybe even September is I think it's a YA book and um, this is Aisha Bashby, A Pocket Full of Stars. Um, this looks so amazing. And there was like, I think Samantha Shannon did like a, a, a preview of some of the books that come out later in the second half of 2019. And that was one of the books she also uh, pinpointed there. And I feel like I really want to read this book. It sounds interesting, amazing. I think it's a daughter-mother, mother-daughter relationship that is in the center of this story. And yeah, when the stars are involved, yeah, we hopefully get the bigger picture there as well. The next book I have now here, this is definitely a YA book, as far as I can say. And this is Tasha Suri, Empire of Sand. This is the first book of her, the books of Amber. Um, I 
what I'm intrigued about with this book is, is it's obviously fantasy and it is placed in a desert environment, in a desert uh, world. And I love reading about the sun and the desert and a completely different climate around myself than what I am used to live in in my everyday life. The second book in the series comes out, I think, in November, beginning of November. Um, I put it up here now so we can see the title. I just can't recollect it right now. But I'm really curious and I hope then also to be able to continue with this series. The next book is also a release of this autumn and this is The Deathless Girls by Karen Millwood Hargrave. Now I have got to tell you, I mean this book cover is just absolutely amazing, stunning, beautiful. I mean look at this and this is not even, not even the one edition with the sprayed edges. There's also one with sprayed edges. And then if you go into the end papers, I mean these are stunning. Then the book cover itself is... Uh, dark blue and has uh, golden imprints. Uh, it's fantastic. This book is a re feminist retelling of Dracula's Brides, so it takes up a topic of a classic. I haven't read Dracula, so I'm going in here bl quite blind, so I'm just going to read this book. If I feel like I want to follow up, I might go back then to the original and see kind of what happens there, whatever, otherwise I just take it as it is. I would expect there is a lot of nature around, as we can see we have here a bear, we have your mushrooms, we have the snake, you have some hands reaching in, you have lots of creepy, creepy um, plants and flowers showing up there as well. So I'm really excited to read this book as well. Well, have heard a lot of praise for this book. Earlier this year I read The Girl of Ink and Paper, also written by Kyron Millwood Hargrave. This book is a middle grade book. And I absolutely, utterly enjoyed it. I love the character. I mean, this character was grounded and fabulous. And if there is something like literary fiction in children's literature, that book definitely would fall into this category. So I'm having really high, ex quite high expectations for this book. Remains to be seen. It's a different age group she's writing here for. So that is going to be quite interesting. Then a little bit an outsider in this book haul is the only literary fiction book I have, or general fiction book, I'm not quite sure as to where it uh, is, can be placed. But this is a book I got recommended by yeah, Kendra Winchester on her uh, blog and then also Russell from Ink Paper blog. And that is Jacqueline Woodson, Right at the Bone. I asked the library to get hold of this book. And lo and behold, I hold it now in my hands. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cover. This is a story about the family, about their history and how they take it off and uh, set out into the future. Very curious to read about this, uh, to read this story as well, to meet new characters, new situations and discover a, a new author as well. Then another most anticipated release by many, many, many people, on, at least on Booktube as far as I'm aware of. I myself am fairly cautious about this book. Uh, the book I'm talking about is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Look at this interesting cover. The snake nearly seems alive. Hopefully not. <laughs> but anyway, um, I saw the library ordered, it had this book ordered, so I put a hold on it. I now got it. I read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo previously. I thought the highest part of the book was very well done. I liked the the, the main characters but didn't hold up if, if you really went into the into the details it, it, it I didn't feel the, the book really held up so I'm just going into this one having a look seeing if I like it or not um, and then yeah we will take it then from there it had comes with high praise I mean Stephen King blurbing Joe Hill blurbing Lev Grossman blurbing Charlton Harris blurbing on the back <laughs> that's quite some praise huh <laughs> And then also two fantasy, science fiction fantasy books I'm really excited about to get to is, first of all, the second in the, in the series I started to read early this year. And finally, I'm getting to the second book. I finally feel like, yes, I'm ready to continue with this series. And this is The Divine Cities by Robert Jackson Bennett. The first book in the series is entitled City of Stairs. Fantastic rep representation of architecture in that book interesting setup with religion without religion uh, what happens there etc i really love the storyline as well strong female characters fantastic representation as well and um, so now i'm going into the second book city of blades um has looks fantastic I, at some point i really hope to be able 
to uh, purchase these books as well and have them on my shelves permanently. And then the last book uh, I would like to talk here about from my library hall is um, another book by Max Gladstone. I read earlier this year, you can see it behind here, this is how you lose the time war. I always want to say this is how you win the time war. <laughs> but it is, this is how you lose the time war. Okay, he, re he wrote this together with Amalia Mofta. This book now is a, f a fantasy, science fiction fantasy book. And that is just written by Max Gladstone and the Empress of Forever. A novel uh, came out by Tor books um i'm just yeah i'm just really i really want to read more of Glad max gladstone i also have the craft sequence on kindle and at some point i really want to read that one as well the book was available at the library and i just felt like yeah i want to read something with science fiction in it and uh, so therefore i got hold of this book and now i can read it as well so these are all the physical books i currently have out from the local library so some of the middle grade but the middle grade books and the children's illustrated non-fiction book i expect to be fairly easy reads and then I will see how I get on with the other ones. Okay, so these are all the books I have currently physically out from the local library. I'm happy to now go back and do some reading because it's, they're really exciting books and I'm really looking forward to get into them, uh, respectively continue reading them and obviously I will then hopefully be able to report back uh, to you uh, in my wrap-up videos as to what I found in these books. Are you taking books out of your local library. How are you set up? I'm curious to hear about what your experiences are. How are you organizing yourself with books, etc. I think that is one of the videos I would like to do at some point to just to order my thoughts a bit, figure out also looking now back over a year and a half of my booktube ch channel to see what works, what doesn't work. Currently I feel I have a little bit too many books out from the library and I'm constantly like overwhelmed a little bit also with the amount of books that come in, but on the other hand, it's also new releases, etc. And I'm really keen to actually read them. But that is a discussion for another time. Otherwise, whatever you, if you want to tell me something, anything, uh, if you if you want to leave a comment, I'm always welcome. Otherwise, happy reading and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.